uh, quite the prestigious thing if you qualify, first of all, especially through this European uh, qualifier where there are so many good uh, two, tier two teams out there, but uh, also to be able to get yourself to DAC and see if you can make a pretty good stand there to affect your potential invitations future. So a lot on the lines here for these two teams, Cloud9 and Team Secret have been on the cusp of, of being one of those, you know, tier one potential invited teams, maybe not necessarily to the majors, but potentially uh, to other events and they, if they can actually secure themselves win in a lot. But we are having a new patch. 7.02 is here, gods. We didn't see mm -hmm. it impact game number one massively. I kind of feel like uh, it, did Cloud9, were they ever, they were in an elimination match before, Five yes, but didn't they 2 0? They were, no, they 2 1 against Alliance. That was that we crazy oh, okay, best of okay. three we had there. Yeah, yeah. I was just um, kind of thinking they had this maybe in their back pocket against the, you know, the right team if they made it to a certain point. They're like, all right, we team time secrets, to pull out that mid brood mother again. Ban. I mentioned they, like, because you going, you're only playing one best of three a day, so you have, and you know who you're going to be versing. So you're drafting wise, like you do a lot of like practice drafts, maybe with your within your own team, and kind of try and anticipate what your opponent's going to pick. And I imagine the discussion within the team was like, "Hey, we can if they pick Invoker, let's consider a surprise Broodmother pick." Because I don't, I think they were like the, the the PA was almost like a red herring where it's like, "Oh, they've got this PA, they're going to expect it mid, and then they can last pick this Brood." Um, against the Invoker, because I, I think that's kind of what the mindset was. Like, probably last night, like, when they were going through what they want to do against Secret, it, it came up as a potential weakness they could exploit. Reserve time. It did work out very well. The the Broodmother was able to take that mid-tower before 10 minutes. He was able to pressure the Invoker. Mid, mid one still got a decent amount of farm, but he definitely was not free farming. He was not able to... to I, I think you weren't able to move around the map yeah, as effectively that's... in part because there's constant pressure that was the big thing like you've got a, a cosmox invoker doesn't want to sit mid and farm an exo invoker you're kind of okay with that but uh the cosmox invoker wants to roam last time we saw mid one play cosmox invoker he was teeping all over the map getting tons of kills being heavily involved um and this game the one time he rotates he does a really successful rotation bottom kills ace on luna punishes some aggression but as he does that he loses his mid tower so it felt like well he got kills but he lost the one thing that Brood wants to take. Beastmaster gods. Uh, yeah, Bane I... and Beastmaster, actually. <laughs> okay. Now that I think about it, they both got significant buffs um, in their talents. Beastmaster has been one of the offlaners who's been long forgotten. Uh, my reasoning has always been that he's an initiator, exactly. but he's he's one of the slowest offlaners up there because you you want Necrobook, then Blink. The only team who, who picked up uh, of notable strength was uh, Team Liquid. They got a Mind Control Beastmaster, but they also created space for him, and he went Necrobook 1 into Link rather than Necrobook 3, like we used Interesting little pickup. Curious to see how Secret Ryan. I don't think you can do any of that like old school jungle Beastmaster anymore. anymore. I think the, the new jungle changes, the Iron Talon and all that just doesn't quite work as effectively, so well, likely we see Secret, yeah, pair him up We'll put him in that offlane, whether he pairs up with anyone, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, an unexpected pick, that's for sure. Something that suggests a bit more kind of mid-game focus from Secret. Like last game, I feel like it was a bit more late-game oriented, even though they had a Drow Ranger, which is perhaps maybe part of the problem with their draft, is they were playing for a late-game Invoker with a Drow Ranger, who generally wants to be more mid-game focused. So the Beastmaster, I typically look at here as like Chen to pair up with a Beastmaster. You get the Auras, you go for the five-man push, you get some seconds, other cores that can all also push and take towers and those are the kind of heroes i think cloud nine five seconds remaining do you think um if if uh cloud nine ban away Reserve the time. chen do you think enchantress is uh... <laughs> Secrets turn to ban. <laughs> Dire team ban. But I am not a big fan of the Enchantress, I guess, as far as how it works in competitive play. Just 
unlike the Chen, you don't have that good group up and push. I think the Enchantress is under immense pressure to win the lightning stage and snowball. Yes. Um, maybe you don't, you as an Enchantress don't have to snowball, but your team has to. Um, so you have to really allow your cause to dominate that early game. And if that doesn't work, I don't feel like there's a good transition out of that for an Enchantress. There's no comeback play for an Enchantress. Yeah, the Enchantress very much has to win the lanes where the Chen can't when he only has one creep. Enchantress can pick up two, and that and that is supposed to be one of the big differences between these two heroes is that you can go at at uh, by forty five seconds smoke and go into a lane and just demolish things. But if you don't manage to get that done, uh, hero starts looking more lackluster as we go into the mid game. Uh, Chen was not actually tough though. Touch, Ten it's going to be Luna. Remaining. It is going to be uh, still a pushing hero from Secret. Yeah, I mean, this can easily build into a Luna fourth pick, uh, the Chen fourth pick if they want to go with the Luna. Um, it becomes very apparent now that Secret do have like a heavy mid game push in mind. They're going to be doing something similar to what Cloud9 did last game in terms of overall strategy, perhaps less so the specific hero picks. But uh, the Luna, the one uh, common theme between the two games. So putting MP on that efficient farming hero and giving good team fight and good push come mid time. Yeah, you know, one of the heroes team that would have been always banned is like Team Secret. If it had been last patch um, and we hadn't seen this Beastmaster pickup, it would have been Lifestealer, Darkseer as the one two bans. But because the Beastmaster is out, Cloud9 can't run a, a Lifestealer. Slardar, they're a little bit limited in options. So they're going to move that Slardar into a support role, pick up a different offlaner. The Underlords talked about yeah. did receive uh, quite the nerf in the level one category. Uh, Currently, has to Joe Rotten still feels comfortable making. Yeah, Bane Luna. Luna is probably one of the heroes that suffers more against the Underlord aura, like in the mid to late game, because she is so agi stat focused uh, with her build. She doesn't get a lot of like plus damage items, so that's where the Underlord aura is really good against Luna herself. Um, and then you've got the the mech, the pipe buyer, if you want to be able to contest the team fight of like the Luna Eclipse. And then fourth pick is going to be the carry that matches up well against the Luna. You make Luna Illusions with Reflection, you outrange her with Ten the Metamorphosis, uh, and you get a lot of benefit from that Slaughter Corrosive Haze to amp up your damage. This Terrorblade pick could work very well. Similarly, though, if the lanes fall apart, you could get run over by the Beastmaster Reserve ganks. Time. Beastmaster one of the better heroes to gank Terrorblade with. Bane also has lots of lockdown. They have lots of control for this Terrorblade. Yeah, Secret, Secret are definitely going for a pretty high octane, like fast pushing, good team fight. Um, in that case, would Tinker, which you said, you know, big counter to the Terror Blade, we saw it ourselves in a series. Um, do you think that Ooh. Secret would be willing to fall back on that hero um, and slow down their their push? Basically, sacrifice some of their synergy in order to counter the Terror Blade, or do you think you just focus on your own draft? Um. Yeah, I don't think Tinker was what they're looking for, but generally I'd say you want to focus on your own draft, but when you have the ability to completely, utterly destroy a pick like Terrorblade, and if Cloudline's draft is all about the Terrorblade, they'll know what the mid-hero is going to be. So if Tinker gets a decent matchup and the mid-hero is not like a hero that can kind of fill in Terrorblade shoes should Terrorblade get shut down, I think you actually just go Tinker because it just hard counters Terrorblade too much. Uh, but Cloud9 have the option to protect it, ban it out, which... I think honestly, again, like anytime you don't ban Tinker when you pick Terrorblade is just a, a big mistake. You know your opponents need a mid, you've got a Terrorblade, like just ban it out. There's Invo oh, Invoker is actually banned as well, so they've already taken that mid one option out. Ember Spirit could theoretically be the choice for mid one. That's like the more high octane here, the fast pace pick for that for him to play. You can fight around like the Beastmaster timings with his Necro Blink. You can just be a nice uh, secondary initiator to follow up a Beastmaster Roar. Um, I like that pick more for Secret Strath, but as far as countering Cloud Nine goes, Tinker. Yeah, because the, the thing is, right, they have this bounty hunter, and right now they don't... I, I don't feel that Team Secret have a, a hero that amplifies this bounty hunter like you really need. Like, the Luna's this pushing hero, and getting information is always helpful, but it doesn't unlock the pick. Beastmaster is a slower offlaner, isn't going to be, you know, enabling kills as quickly. So again, the bounty hunter really um, unlocked the, the potential of being able to snowball Five off of these track kills remaining. isn't really there. So I would have much preferred the, the Ember Spirit or some other uh, fast-paced ganking that. style controlling, like a tempo controller uh, uh, for mid lane for Secret, but they actually banned away the Ember remaining. Spirit themselves. There is going to be the Tinker ban from Cloud9, uh, yeah. and we will see what mid they choose. 
So mid lane's left. Baby Knight has a very weird pull of mids. We see, I mean, you saw the Brood last game, we saw Warlock earlier, and it's it's going to be a weird hero. Team That's actually a terrible like, counter. Not that I think Secret were going to pick it. I don't think they're picking Zeus because it's like, oh, our opponents are going to pick Zeus and counter terribly. Let's make sure. Uh, <laughs> 10 seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. The talent is kind of a non factor. Why Zeus, though? Yeah. Ten seconds. Uh, I, I think that. These are some okay buffs. I, I would even argue that the Scepter Duration, um, so quote-unquote nerf, is actually a buff, because you don't want that thing sticking around for seconds <laughs> necessarily for the enemy team to kill. So, yeah, I, yeah, I guess Zeus a little bit better, but Templar Assassin is going to be picked up by Team Secret. Uh, I'll do pretty well in the mid lane. Should be able to farm out. Not a problem there. And does have uh, some kill potential, especially level six, but maybe with the bounty hunter. We'll yeah, I'm still trying to figure out like why. Why do you think Cloud Nine opts for Zeus this game? Like, it's not necessarily an amazing counter to any of these heroes. It just seems like they have this idea about what Zeus can do with their draft. Like, what what do you think Zeus is about here? I mean, I would have thought it, it would be Sniper, or I I don't think it was Band Away, right? No. You needed one of those heroes that would be able to sit back and steal out or uh, Team Secret. I think Zeus is probably one of the better heroes, but he's just been... Um, I, I mean, the burst damage is good versus Luna. They don't have... It, it, part of the. I think a big part of the reason is the fact that they don't have a sustain offlaner. This Beastmaster is going to go... Uh, I'm going to presume it's going to be the... Necronomicon one into blink to try and give yourself some better form of initiation in which case you don't have the uh, whole lot of sustain So there's not going to be a pipe here or anything like that unless bounty hunter gets really far ahead So Zeus's anti pushing powers are, are actually going to be somewhat formidable Yeah, until he I guess until that blink comes up. There's not much danger to his life They haven't got good protection for him against the blink roar the grave is there, but uh, if he gets roared I feel like he may still go down. It looks like C9 may have an idea of where Puppy is. They were heading towards that top area, although he tucks himself into the trees. Doesn't look like anything too crazy coming out of these lanes. Hester Joe down bottom is going to run into a couple of heroes early on. I think in the past he went Firestorm level 1 anyways, um, just so like when supports harass him he just dropped a Firestorm. Um, but now even more so, I think you go Firestorm over the, the aura. Four percent damage reduction doesn't seem like uh, a worthy investment. Oh. Noya, they Noia. do know that uh, Pilot Die has brain sap, so there's nothing to stop this crush and stealing of the bounty rune. So C9 get three of them. Cost him maybe like a tango or something, but he's okay with that. Puppy unable to pressure the mid lane bounty rune, so that is a good outcome for C9. Often you expect it. Oh. Yeah, Noya gonna have to maybe even go for an early shrine up here if he's not careful, but often you expect that bounty hunter to perhaps like harass a Zeus at his rune and uh, try and steal it, but that wasn't possible as Noya will get love tapped and have his clarity broken. This you should be able to do pretty well as a Beastmaster though. Laning phase wise, uh, Beastmaster yeah. is better than most and he's only facing up against a dual lane, Terrorblade and uh, Castle. And when Terrorblade does pop Metamorphosis, he could just go back and jungle. <laughs> They want that boar. <laughs> they poison touch really it, but did. Kezu gets the deny. And uh, yeah, Kezu with the stout ring of prot is very hard to deal with in this top lane. Rise double tangos his way through and still taking a lot of hits and not trading efficiently against this Beastmaster. They are attempting to snipe the courier. Bottle is coming out now, but I think Baby Knight's. Just... Well, I hope Baby Knight's just uh, going to run back for it. Otherwise, Puppy's yeah, going to grab that courier, deny that weird. bottle, and that'll be a huge win for the Templar Assassin. Yeah, you know it's coming. I feel like I've seen this way too many times, and it is going to stay, even on the high ground. Sometimes you see the bounty between the Tier 2 and Tier 3. He has got a Sentry World, so now he knows where the bounty is, so he can bring that courier out. So this harass trade is actually helps Baby Knight because it gives him the info and allows him to get his bottle. 
Not a problem. As long as he's got mana, he can get CS, but if he couldn't get that bottle, he'd be screwed against a Templar Assassin. No way your outlet last hitting the one. Those refraction charges. Trying up for C9 and their dual lane. Noya and Hasijo. He's still with Aura level one. On. Dang. Oh yeah, he went the 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 male like the harassment, I think in part, I think static field's better against TA, but the Oh no, sorry, I was talking about lane. the uh the un the underlord who went that went level one aura. That's, that's oh, really? surprising to me, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> one of the more lackluster level one spells in the game, but even so, looks like he's at least getting some decent XP now down in this bottom lane. The Slado's presence should allow him to be able to at least fight Pylidae pretty nicely here. So it does look like uh, kind of going to resort to a 2-2 lane. So we'll have to see what Puppy can do to upset things in the other lanes, whether he heads up top. I imagine Kezu's probably thinking he's doing just fine getting solo XP, but if there is kill potential on Ryze's Dazzle, he may make the call to have Puppy come and help him out. You know, without a courier snipe, I, I feel like this bounty hunter is looking more and more of a lackluster pick. I, I don't feel like they're going to ensure that there's going to be a lot of track kills. Like Templar Assassin's a pretty decent mid, uh, like tempo controller, but it's not that like a really aggressive puck or something like that. He's going to come up to top lane, try and help Kezu out. Uh, maybe go for Rise, get a couple shots there. But Ace with the Metamorphosis, there's nobody Probably who wants die. to fight into them. Oh no, he's okay. Three seconds on his invis, he'll get it back up just in time. Down to 40 HP, actually. He was very close to dying in the end. That was a risky play. The low-level bounty hunter doesn't even have his Janata up yet. Considering a shrine, but at the same time, do you really want to waste your shrine for a level 1 bounty hunter? I don't think that's necessarily the, the play to make. When the Beastmaster can probably get a lot more value out of that shrine. These are just strong defensive lanes from Cloud9. Zeus sits pretty far back, and he's got a sentry there. The Slardar is helping the Underlord at bottom lane. That's not really a lane you can go into. And then it's a Terrorblade Dazzle at top. That's also not uh, a lane that presents any real weakness. So Bounty Hunter in this laning phase going to have a hard time getting any and does pick up his Shrine. Yeah. Yeah, it gets that bounty rune, leeches some XP from the neutrals, so helps him out a little bit. Gets another bounty rune as well, so that suddenly goes from being a kind of not too useful level 1 bounty to almost level 3 bounty, and that's where you've got the that 1-1-1 one, one, one build where you have got a lot of damage output if you do gank a, line, a lane. But as you said, TA doesn't really necessarily pair up best as far as getting kills. Perhaps with the psionic traps you could see uh, uh, aggression on the baby knight at mid, but Zeus's positioning, if you stand right back, should be... Enough to avoid getting gone on. Mid one is uh, at a very large CS lead. That's not surprising. Should be as a Templar Assassin against a Zeus. Being at 32 and 13 compared to the 19 and 0 on Baby Knight. Most of the time you're not picking up a Zeus though. You get a whole lot of CS. Mid one is going to be caught here in the mid lane. They are going to be able to take off those refraction charges. Nice heal bomb from Ryze as well. But the sleep is going to come in from Pylai Die. Baby Knight. That is in part because he doesn't have that heavy level of uh, lightning. Yeah, nice, nice sleep. If Slider chases and gets another crash off, or even just gives Zeus some vision, that could have potentially led to a kill. Important to keep mid one alive there, and does get him back to safety. He's continuing to be annoying. Is now finding some push up towards Hestero jungle, who is fairly low here. So Hestero does need to be careful not to get lower than he already is. Baby Knight's gonna join him for this last hitting. Maybe he has to Joe call that he's not feeling comfortable even with that scan. Dyer's Being alone. Is under attack. Boy, the Slardar also has come, comes back. They are gonna be able to... Unfortunately, Puppy's not quite level 3. If they had this level 3, this would be an easy kill, but without that extra nuke, they're gonna have to try and die for it. They do manage to get it. Thanks to MP making his way over. Does have the Eclipse as well, but Noya... It's a bit too far out of range for them to feel comfortable. Meanwhile, Kezu at top lane. They do have the ultimate coming out uh, from the Zeus. That'll make it a whole lot easier with the double slows to kill the Beastmaster. Good use of the first Zeus ulti. Just doesn't get, get it doesn't actually get the gold or XP himself, but make sure they get the kill up top. He's just back to farming, so he doesn't really care if his ulti's on cooldown, and he doesn't use up any mana because he was at the fountain anyway. So he's already back up to full, and top lane will see some pressure as a result of this. Kezu's going to try draw aggro with the wild axes, but 
Even with the aggro drawn, the TB Metamorphosis will at least chip at this tower, although it doesn't look like it'll do all too much damage. Puppy spots out Rise. What was Rise doing there? Besides grabbing a bounty yes. rune, that seems like a pretty dangerous position to be in. He may end up going down here. They're gonna throw out the Primal Roar, finish him off with the Shuriken. Bounty mm -hmm. rune not worth it. I'm sure they needed to roar there. Puppy was holding the Shuriken to cancel a TP if needed, but either way, Kazu probably less interested in leaving his lane than that. If he does so, that tower could take some serious damage. Puppy, is he going to find this courier? Is under attack. Pick up in position, gets one click, and another attack. We'll finish it off nicely played by Puppy. All of a sudden, our bounty hunter is rolling. They got a kill on the Underlord, picked up level 4 now, has a kill on the Dazzle, as well as a courier kill. Which is, I thought this lading phase was going to be rough for Puppy, he still found a way. Yeah, this gets a couple bounty runes, and all it takes is that one pick off, and suddenly you're in business. And he's going to be up to, yeah, Arcane Boots fairly soon, so pretty effective Bounty Hunter. And I'm going to say the lanes are looking pretty good across the board for Team Secret. They're winning both mid and bottom lane, of course. The offlane Beastmaster, now with that kill, is level 7. Uh, and is matching the Terrorblade in terms of experience and clo not too far away in terms of overall, like, CS and stuff. So I feel like Secret are doing very well in this lane stage. Mid one's going to go for the fast Blink Dagger, and he finds a DD room, which is... Potentially dangerous if he can find a rotation off of this, but he may just look to use it to farm some ancients. Underlord's been jungling away and they put Slardar in a more farming position bottom lane. Rise even rotates down to against the Bane Luna, because that is a very dangerous nuking combination. Pure damage, a brain sap uh, combined with the uh, heavy Lucent Beam damage need any kind of support and ace doesn't really need a whole lot of help against kezu i get yeah. anyway yeah. and this is a rotation with a raw ace should be more than okay up here and the raindrops will at least block that raw damage to start things off so that's a, a good chunk of damage missing should you try and go on ace here but he can farm illusions like you send that one illusion out he gets takes it down that's 13 gold very easily picked up so I think it's saying a lot of these like illusion carries kind of forget about is that you can't just leave your illusions in lane, otherwise you're giving away free gold. That's a third of a creep. Good enough of those. Whatever if it counts towards the the uh, a little bit. Yeah, possibly. Oh, the nuke, not quite enough. Puppy survives off of 20 HP. Baby Knight just barely misreading that one. Yeah. Lawyer in behind, but I don't think he's gonna. Yeah, he's not going to run into Puppy. Perhaps thinking Puppy would head north towards that shrine or the bounty rune, but not the case. That he's going to run into Kezu, which right by an enemy shrine is not a place you want to be. A potential raw TP. Not going to go for it. As perhaps I don't think he was expecting to find the, the Slada there. So C9's lineup, pretty defensive. Not yeah. really getting a huge lead in the laning phase. It's Secret who are picking more of that up. When does Cloud9's lineup really line? Like, when did they actually start doing things? Blink Slaughter, I guess. I don't see any yeah. real big scary timings before that. The mech of Underlord is probably the other one, but they're they're the reactionary team. They're going to be doing what Secret did last game, but I think to an even greater extreme. They they have no real playmaking potential. Like, none of their heroes roam. Zeus is like got a lot of burst potential, but he doesn't move around the map very well. It's only the Slada who does, and we're at that point now where, until he gets a blink, Noi isn't going to have much roam potential. Baby Knight baits in the TA at mid, but the refraction up, I don't think he's actually doing all too okay here. I was about to say they're baiting Through a haste room. Fortunately, he does play Ring Around the Rosie Around the Trees and does yeah. manage to dodge that second melt strike. It could have finished him off. Another blink in from TA. <laughs> Mid one playing very aggressive. He just wants his tower. He's got the trap in the tree so we can see potential TPs in. He's going to have another refraction soon, but doesn't look like he wants to get that tower down to deny range just yet. But yeah, I think overall C9 have very little they can do except react to aggression and dives. Like they need to have TPs for when Secret try and make plays. Uh, Secret have a lot of kill opportunities and smoke op possibilities with the raw, with the eclipse, with a blink TA. They're going to be the aggressors this game and C9 can try and respond and like TP in with a metamorphosis, TP in with the Zeus damage. Uh, they're the ones who can look to retaliate. A flame tower does go down. 
Secret eventually chipped that one away. Mid two one gonna be dropped by mid one, so they are beginning to get some of that map control that we talked about. Terror Blade is gonna have a harder and harder time farming. Same goes with Doya. You said his blink dagger timing is gonna be pretty key. I feel like those are the two heroes that need to need to constantly watch as Ace's farm may allow them to be able to take down some towers. His positioning, maybe he can split push at the right time. So go for uh, some five man, but the thing is that the, it's not like Secret needs necessarily 5-man. They've got some pretty good split-pushing heroes, uh, uh, particularly with this offlane Beastmaster, who does have the Necronomicon 1 and MP coming over, so they're going to quickly kill to Joe. No need for uh, an Eclipse either. I like that move. I was thinking, all right, Luna's coming in, making sure they have like the magic damage to an Eclipse to get the kill, but yeah, with the Necro Book. Just a Lucent Beam, and this is one of those rotations where you're almost certainly going to get a tower as well. Uh, C9 just not really ready to fight. You've got some of these defending heroes like Zeus, but it doesn't really feel like that's a tower you can defend. They'd rather go for trades elsewhere on the map. Ace just pops a Metamorphosis mid, but even this is going to be a tricky tower to take if Secret want to rotate heroes in, and Pi's in position for a crit. Oh, he's oh, going to be slowed that, down. They turn no, around. Brain that. Sap managed to hit the stun. Pylite die. Not finished off, though. Ace doesn't want to position himself between those towers at double damage. Maybe not. I'm not sure what that was. But either way, mid one. Yeah. It blows up Noya. It's, it's such a great position for Secret to be in. They've secured the top T1 tower, and everyone who's up there with MP can TP back in mid. They can to fight and defend mid lane with four heroes, knowing that the Loon is kind of in a strategical, strategically strong position where she can solely push that tower, has the Eclipse to help protect herself. C9 aren't looking to defend it anyway. It's TP's committed the Metamorphosis mid. He can't TP out in plain sight, so they secure top tower, they defend their mid tower, and even find the pick off thanks to the, the blink of TA. Mid one very close to this Desso timing, and this is where I feel Secret can quickly run away game off of this Desso pickup. They're gonna have a lot of space to be able to take Roshan with this. Oh, I, I don't know how Cloud9 actually deal with this. They just don't have any real good playmakers. I, they picked up a Zeus man. Yeah. They picked up an offlane Underlord, so that's gonna be another slow hero. Uh, maybe when they have the mech, they can go for a five-man push, but at this rate, it seems like Secret is just going to be too far ahead for uh, a five-on-five -five clash to be to Client's advantage. Uh, absolutely. I feel like the, the, the slider blink, that one playmaking opportunity is coming well, well, well too far away. They're going to lose Roshan out of the towers. Potential push towards a high ground could even come before the mid one can likely get numerous kills around the map with this desolator as well. This blink is not coming at a rate that's going to suffice. And if anything, Secret may just see this slider trying to farm his blink dagger and send heroes down there to kill him. Right now, Kezu's looking to just be down here for the solo kill possibility. MP is going to be slowed down, caught by the Pit of Malice. Not going to hold him for long though. Pylai die gets hit. By the slow from the Terra Blade. They do manage to finish him off. MP's actually kind of turning, hitting some nuke onto Hester Joe. He knows he's got the Templar Assassin ready to jump in at a moment's notice if Cloud Knight overextend themselves. So that kind of push in, they were their two heroes again without that kind of playmaking, catching style hero. Oh, roll Kezu, bottom. He's going to go for it, but the TP is coming in. He may be able to finish off Noya, but Ryze gets there in time. He was trying to hide in those trees, knowing that there was. A lot of space created for him by that aggression up top. Cloud9 do a good job getting the one kill up there, but it's still just the support here and not the ideal outcome for them. But they do manage to stop Kezu from getting any further kills down bottom. He gets damage on this T2 tower. This has just been a split push kind of play coming out from him. Noyer's going to be there at least to defend it for now, but still some, some good damage that Secret are going to be able to look to maintain pressure on the C9 side of the map with. There's an opening for Roshan. They're yep. going to have to deal with Kezu's bottom lane pushes constantly, so somebody's got to be there to protect that tier 2 tower and take Roshan so quickly that it doesn't really give any opportunity for C9 to rotate. Very hard to punish this Beastmaster down here too, because he just leaves that Hawk up around the secret shop. He sees TPs onto the shrine. He sees any rotations coming his way. So he's able to do this in a fairly cautious manner. The one thing that could shut him down is a smoke gain. Uh, but even that is not the easiest thing to execute, given the lack of a blink dagger on Slada still. So secret with an Aegis, likely see them start now looking to prioritize these outer towers. Strategically, they're in a very strong position right now. And C9 just have to rely on their stalling capability. Zeus, Underlord, two great high ground defenders, great lane clearers. Dyer's
Oh so yeah, hit by another Primal Roar. Does have his team coming in. Sprint is also up. There's going to be a Dark Rift onto one of these creeps. Kezu may be caught here, but the creep actually aggroes over to uh, Pets of Kezu. Looks like uh, Ace was going down. Pile I die. And mid one managed to combo up, get that kill. Now they're going to be able to get a whole lot more. Baby Knight, he's not making it out alive. Belt strike on him. Has to Joe. Going to be slowed down as well with the Nightmare. Secret position themselves to blow him up. Three down, three cores dead on the side of Cloud9. And T-Crit switch in this tier two. It's one of those, those games where it, like, it's it's hard to paint like a bright future for Cloud9 with this game. Like As, as a commentator, no, it's like you don't want to say this game's over. It really doesn't feel like they have opportunities to turn this game around. They can stall it out, they can defend high ground, and that really is their, their play right here. I think other than defending their high ground and just stalling this game out and hoping that they can put together some good fights around like a farm Terrorblade Zeus, this Zeus pick has not panned out well for them. TA has crushed the lane, is snowballed out of control. Luna has free farmed as well, and through Towers and Roshan, Secret are going to have full map control, and it, it feels like just a matter of time before Secret eye off that high ground and will test that C9 high ground defense. It does kind of seem like uh, Cloud9 they needed an, an Ember Spirit. They needed some sort of playmaker that would be able to get pick off, set up kills, all that sort of thing. Uh, and that was the ban from from yep. Secret Cloud9 with this Zeus looked particularly ineffective. You know, sometimes you have these different picks, um, and sometimes they work like the Broodmother last game, and sometimes they just fall very flat because this. Zeus pick has definitely been the latter case, and I, I think with C9 they've always been. Oh, in what a sick play! Did you God. see that? Puppy. Yeah. Puppy, puppy dropped the counter word for the vision. Oh, that's dope. That he, there's really no nice. way he wraps around that tree and gets the shuriken out in time. So dropping the sentry for the bit of vision, just to be able to get that shuriken out, stopping the TP. Fun. Just further advancing secrets lead. Or track money puppy gonna go for the pipe so he's got the answer for the zeus underlord spam when they go for that high ground push and it's another raw kezu this time with an echo three the mech tp out looks like yeah hester will be more than okay thanks to the aura but kezu now with the necro book up is probably telling his team like necro books up let's get this bottom lane and noia was so close to blink and baby knight's not even gonna make it no out escape. yeah no four stuff no yules I mean, he's just not farmed. Like, at this point, the Aether Lens first is, like, nothing wrong with this item build, but it's the fact that he doesn't have another item, like a full staff on top of this, or a Yule Scepter to help him out, and, yeah, high ground is coming soon from Secret. Good one, playing fearlessly. Dive it in on Hester Joe. They are having a bit of high ground defense, especially with the Zeus buyback now, and the Underlord, thinking Secret, are going to be fourth back. That is the, the one thing going for Cloud9. They do have lots of high ground defense between Underlord and... Yeah, so until this... Oh, they got Glimmer Cape and set on Puppy, so he had the pipe queued up, but bought the Glimmer Cape first, so we had to put this on the TA or Luna, who's like the single high ground sieger with some magic resistance, and... I think more than anything, their approach to sieging high ground is just going to be mid one, blink it and kill someone, and with 5.2k ult, he can pick up a Daedalus or something scary to just burst down a single hero, he queues up a Eagle Song. See what's going to come from that, or... I'm not sure. Not a really a butterfly game? sure about the butterfly pickup but either way I go, he just needs to be able to burst down that one here in the front nice and fast what are one of he's thinking it's because of aging high ground huh if he has butterfly he can be yeah one hitting that tower it doesn't have to fear as much from terrorblade or the tower shots right yep. it is going to be taken out pretty quickly so with all this magic damage he's yeah, the, the evasion is also good against the reflection, against his own illusions, theoretically, so... It's... It's not a... It, it's probably like the one source of damage his team can't easily deal with. Like, Ace is not a good target for TA to go on. TA wants to go on the Zeus. So Zeus's magic damage is likely going to be taken out of the picture pretty quickly. It's also negated by the Glimmer Cape. Uh, they probably feel like they can deal with the magic damage, but the farmed up Terra Blade reflection could really be kite around the TA who doesn't have that the range to deal with a Terra Blade, but either way, I think we'll see uh, this high ground attempt succeed fairly soon from Team Secret. Secret doing a great job buying space for... <laughs> I just, <laughs> just kind of chill it out here oh, in this yeah. top lane, farming away, right-clicking yep. creeps. 
rest of his team's like all up in the face of C9. Pilot dies like, I'm taking a well-deserved break, yeah. guys. I'm getting some gold. Yeah, it's gonna be the, the pipe buyer, it looks like, so. He should have a pipe by the time next Aegis is acquired for secret, if they want to wait for that Aegis. Uh, Luna's gonna have a BKB, so like level 3 Eclipse with BKB on Luna, chuck an Aegis onto your TA, so TA can just blink past the tower and kill heroes. At that point, like, I feel like there's nothing C9 can do. So they need to make sure it doesn't get to that point, and that's smoke up with Noise, newly acquired Blink Dagger. This is one of those smokes where I feel like they have to get a big kill and probably multiple kills at that. And not find anybody. The mid one, mid lane against, they're gonna back around him, see if catch, but see if are playing the right side now. They're gonna go high ground, noticing that no one's inside the base, so they just quickly take out that tier three tower, now start getting that glaive damage onto the Raxes. ST Joe now sits in front with the spam, but they're having a hard time with the pipe now, being able to clear through these, uh, both the illusions as well as the creeps. Yeah. They've got track vision on Noya, so they now know where the initiation from C9 is. That makes this push a bit easier to, to approach as well. Team Secret. Happy to maybe back off now they force those rotations back. It's, like you say, they just noticed no one's defending high ground. Wait a second, guys. This is a free tier 3 tower. We don't need Aegis. We don't need this next level of items. If they're not going to be here, we just we take the tier 3. They almost took the melee racks. Now they can back off and wait for that Roche respawn if they want. If C9 just camp their high ground defending, you wait for Roche. And if C9 make moves out of the base, you either threaten to split push like we just saw, or you fight them head on because Secret are well and truly miles ahead. It is 26, when it's like a thousand, <laughs> a thousand net worth per minute or higher, that's like, that, that's like the biggest stomps you'll see. Very rarely, like that's like a one in a hundred type one-sided game that you see where it's a thousand net worth a minute advantage. Kazu gets his blink dagger off the shrines going down, so as you're talking about, if Cloud9 push out, if there's opportunities for picks, Secret will have quite the big increase in power being able to catch Cloud9 with this nation. Looks like he's also queued up uh, a gem just to make sure they have total control. He's got the Necrobook, sure, but just to make sure they have total control of the map and C9 do not have any vision down. Four man smoked up, has to Joe farming the jungle. They are trying to push out with an illusion, waiting for somebody to come in, maybe because of nine has to Joe here farming the neutrals, and they want to try to game or maybe stop this uh, illusion push that's coming in. Some way, somehow, Cloud9 are hoping Secret will uh, fall into this trap, but. Yeah, it's not looking too bright for them. I mean, even if they kill some, even if Kezu gets overly aggressive, they kill Kezu. It doesn't really change the state of the game very much. Either way, it just leads to Secret. Delay, it delays the game out a bit. Wait for me, Secret. Then going to go for that that Aegis probably. But as it stands, Secret say, "Oh, they're pushing bottom. Let's let's Radiant's go fight them." There's a terror blade there, which means there's teammates Radiant behind him. They are yeah. ready to go at Team Cloud9 with their BK. It's both TA and Luna now have a BKB. Mid one told his team to hold up for a second. Ran back, picked up that BKB. Is ready to fight, ready to blink in. They do have the initiation. Kezu actually gets stunned up before he can get off the roar. Now Pylai dies. In some serious trouble. Ace almost finishes him off. They do manage to get Kezu down, but they've already lost their initiator, and they managed to get the Fiend's grip on the Ace with the Eclipse cleaning up hero after hero. That is going to be four down from Cloud9. Baby Knight, the only one to escape off of a TP. I was wondering if Bundle was just going to instantly try and Dark Rift out there. The second secret came in, but he got instantly Nightmare, so he could not use a spell, couldn't use his mech to help out his team until like five seconds into the fight. And with all those series dead, buybacks will be forced. Mid one had a double damage. He'll quickly use that double damage to take the bottom lane of Rax and Secret. Puppy's just diving forward, tracking heroes. He knows there is very little Cloud Knight can do at this point. Baby Knight three shot it. Godlike, mid one. Link up yeah. in four. Nah, he's not gonna pursue. I mean, individually, I don't really feel like Cloud Nine did anything wrong in this game. I just think draft wise, they had. No chance. Uh, their lanes, they they lost all three lanes effectively. Like the top lane, Beastmaster got so much out of that lane. I, I would consider that a loss as well for Cloud9. And mid game, they have no playmaker. On top of the Pit of Malice, they can't even get a single kill. That kind of somewhat decent initiation doesn't result in anybody dying except for Cloud9 members. Shallow Grave on Hester Joe will save them. But it looks like Cloud9. They just have to uh, call the GG or suffer 
watching Megas being taken by Secret. Yep. And Secret, it looks like they're even saying, let's go Roche potentially. It is up. After all, TA is in the neighborhood. Uh, if they want to get Roche, they definitely can. Cap this game's. I feel like it's not like a matter of like, what do they need to win this game? I feel like this game's been over for like a good 10 minutes right now, so. Yeah, it really is. I don't, don't have too much else to say personally, but uh, I mean, game three, it, it feels like the team. Uh, game one wasn't so much of a stop, but I feel like we've seen two. We have seen two draft wins in a row. Like, I don't feel like either team, in terms of overall gameplay, like be it an individual player outplaying someone or like just out executing in team fight, I don't feel like either team has proven to be the better team yet. But draft wise, we've seen two really well executed drafts game one by cloud nine game two by secret well in my experience gods it's it's been the two draft wins and then the third game will be very even and very well matched and we'll truly get to see a test finally they get a kill they got kezu down Look, for only 16 seconds. seconds good lord all right fiend scrape on ahead to joe preventing that dark rift out once again mp with eclipse out is dealing a lot of damage noise is trying to threaten him down with a cross of haze but can't do it mid one cleans up the damage dealers gets the back line towards the end now, Cloud9 will G out. Maybe not killing his items. Fantastic display of net worth loss. That's actually an insane level 15 talent for Beastmaster. Now that I see that, I'm like, wait a second. That's one of those scenarios like Lone Druid. You hit level 20, it's like you 